Hans Planing, Burr Elm, has got to be one of the most vigorous exercises in the workshop. Welcome to Workshop Essentials. Although quite a lot of this is nice and flat, there is an area here which drops away. It's obviously the outside of the tree at some point. And here it's a bit of a feather edge actually. And I think that at leg height is going to upset a lot of ladies who are wearing stockings. If we catch the leg on that, I won't be very popular. So in consultation with the client, we've decided to do this. I'm going to drop this area down to make a sort of ledge with a, a nice curve to it. And that will delineate the flat area from this slopey area. Because the other thing about this is if somebody puts a wine glass down without realising that that's a slope, it's going to go all over the floor, isn't it? So a line there will delineate the flat part of the table. And I can make that you know, that wide, what's that, 40 millimetres or something. And then I can reshape this to make it steeper so that you retain all this character but not have such a sharp edge. So to do that, I'm going to route this away and I'm going to do it with a template. So I've got a piece of scrap MDF here and I've set my dividers to the biggest offset distance there. And then just sort of mark out roughly parallel to my chalk line on there to get the, the same curve or something similar to it on my template. And then I can cut that out, clamp it in place and run my router along it. Right, well, I've never done this before. <laughs> I've never used a chainsaw or anything other than firewood. Let's see what happens. <laughs> This is the underside of the tabletop, and I'm trying to work out where I'm going to put the legs. I only want three legs on this, and uh, I don't want to have two tenons meeting at, at an acute angle. That's not going to be very good at all. So I'm going to try to arrange it as a sort of legs of man type of arrangement. So there'll be a rail here with a leg on the end of it, joining into the rail there that's got a leg onto it. And this leg here, this leg rail, joins into there. So it'll be a sort of triangle with the corners extended. And I think that will look quite nice. Uh, not that you'll really see it, you'll only see the legs, of course, and unless you get on your back. We'll turn it upside down. But I think that's going to work, yes. Oh. <laughs> We need some power. <laughs> Shall we try that one again? <laughs> This leg has got quite a lot in the way of fissures and further up the other end as well. But I'm going to taper the leg to make it a square at the foot. And as you can see, I'm going to lose nearly all that. There'll only be a little tiny bit left and I expect to be able to fill that with super glue.
That's all right. <coughs> Save that, you never know. To mark out the octagon, I set my square to be half the diagonal, like that. And then I can just use it to mark out the corners of my octagon. And then we just join up the corners like that. We should have a pretty good octagon there. I've got two planes set up. The Bailey plane is set for quite a coarse cut for fast stock removal. And then the bevel up plane is set more finely as I approach my taper lines. This phantasmagorical looking machine is the ultimate table saw tenon jig. And I developed this quite a few years ago now and I published it on Workshop Essentials Volume 3. And if you cut your tenons with a bandsaw, I've got the bandsaw equivalent on Workshop Essentials Volume 6, and it is the best tenon jig in the world. And I challenge you to prove me wrong. It's not just accurate. Lots are accurate. It's fast, it's quick to set up, which many are not, and it's totally guarded. The blade is totally enclosed. I can't get my hand in there short of deliberately shoving it in there. It's guarded at the front, it's guarded at the back, it's guarded at the side. It works with a spacer like this. And so it means you can do tenons of any thickness you want, whether you work in inches or millimetres. And if this spacer fits this mortise like that, then my tenon is going to fit the mortise because it comes out exactly the same size as the spacer. And it does that because the jig itself takes into account the thickness of the blade. So we, we cut one side, and then we insert the spacer, and we cut the other side, and it just comes out right. And the proof of the pudding, this is my test piece, and that goes in there like that, and it stays put. It's pushed together by hand. It's not going to split, the, it's not too tight. Tight, but not too tight. Not too tight. <laughs> there we go. Right, so we start, it doesn't actually matter which one you do first, but I like to start with the jig closed to begin with. Um, I've, I've, adjusted, I've, I've adjusted my guards so that they don't hit each other, and I've uh, set the blade height, which gives me the tenon depth, of course, and so I think we're ready to go. And it is that simple. And once I've cleaned the chick chicks off, you can see that that's going to fit absolutely perfectly. Dead central. You don't have to have it central, of course. If you're doing an offset tenon, which you might have for a, a table rail going into a leg, you want to keep it as far to the outside as you can, so that you can keep it as long as you can, then you just simply adjust the position of this so that it cuts more to one side. But that is going to be fairly uh, central for my purposes. So I've just got to do the others now. The underside of this table is going to be a three-legged arrangement. And I did consider it turning a round tenon on the ends of the legs and inserting them like you would on a Windsor chair. But for that, you really need high-quality force nibbits for the hole because the, the exit hole has to be clean. And my cheap and nasty ones aren't up to that job. And I no longer have my nice Cly Clyco ones. So... I'm going to do a leg and rail arrangement instead. I took a photograph of the burr, took it into SketchUp, turned it into a solid, and then I could see where I could put my legs. And when I got my legs in the right place, I could make the rails to suit. 
and this is the resulting drawing from that model. And it gives me all the data that I need. So it tells me how long each rail needs to be. As you can see, they're all different lengths. It tells me what angles they need to be cut at at the end, and they're all different angles. And it tells me how far each um, joint is from the end of the rail next to it. So all the data for this has come off my SketchUp model. So I've got my legs. I've counterboard them for screws, because I'm going to use stainless steel screws. And you do have to be very careful where you put them. I've got to be careful where I put my screws. If I put them too close to the point, there is the risk of them poking out, which obviously I don't want. So I've got to keep them fairly well in, close towards the heel, rather than the toe. And then I should be safe. So that gets clamped up like that. And then with my pencil marks lined up, I can put a little wedge in there. Nice. Bit of wax. And in goes my screw. Look at that. I've made some little clamping blocks and that's just um, a drilled hole and two saw cuts so that it fits over the end of the rail like that. And the sharp point sits in that hole so it doesn't get damaged. And I can apply pressure when I'm gluing the leg on without damaging that point. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more turps to that. better that's better so that was about one and a half parts of uh, mineral spirits we'll just get rid of that yeah nice and runny that's what I want and let's see what this does to it ah, look at that Look at that. If it ends up looking as good as that when the whole lot's dry, I shall be very happy. Right, well, I've got some waxed screws. And, oh, I do need to pilot for these, actually. Now, before I put the last coat of polish on this, I think it will be the last coat, I've got to do a little bit of levelling up, because this table is not level. You can see from the spirit level, it's, it's very wonky. And that's not because I've made it wrong. It's because this board, this top burr, varies in thickness. It's about 40 mil here. It's only about 25 here. That's inch and a half down to an inch. And um, so that gives it a little bit of a slope. And you'll notice that if you put a cup of tea. <laughs> if you put a cup of tea on it, you'll notice. So, I'm jacking up the uh, two of the legs to make it level. Like that. And that's really rather nice now. So, um, this highest leg, the one I've jacked up the most, doesn't need to be touched except to make it flat as opposed to... Your, the, square to the leg it's got to be square to the parallel to the floor 
Um, so I've got a little pile of, a little pile of um, spacers, which are the same as the ones I've used here. And I'm going to use these to mark off a line all the way around the feet. And that will show me where to cut to. And I should end up with a table which sits perfectly level. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please remember to like, subscribe and share. And until the next time, enjoy your workshop. Cheerio!